NH Limited, this question came from the AS paper, so the 7126 specification paper from um, 2020. And it's a little straightforward one on control accounts. So we've got a list of um, balances from various books of prime entry, and then we've got some additional information, an error, and some information about provision for doubtful debts. And all we're asked to do for five marks, prepare a sales ledger control account and for another five marks, prepare a purchase ledger control account. So we'll just go through it um, together. So cash purchases and cash sales. If you remember, if we're doing a control account, they have no place in a control account, either a sales ledger control account or a purchase ledger control account. They don't belong there. Now, what we need to do is work through this list and work out which of these are going to go in the sales ledger and which of these are to do with the purchases ledger. So discount allowed, this is discount that is allowed to customers, so that's going to be in the sales ledger. Discount received is received from suppliers, that's going to be purchase ledger. Payments to credit suppliers, well that's for our purchases, so that's going to be purchase ledger. Receipts from credit customers, 10,200. Because it's customers, it's to do with sales, so that's obviously going to be sales ledger. A returned check from a credit customer, also sales ledger. Um, and the purchases journal total, that is the total for purchases. That's all the invoices. So remember, the purchases journal is a book of prime entry. That's obviously going to be purchase ledger. And the sales journal is going to be <clears throat> um, sales ledger. OK, it also tells us that due to an error, a credit supplier had been overpaid by £180. This resulted in the supplier's account having a debit balance of 180. Now, there's a little clue. So that suggests that this is an unusual occurrence because we've overpaid the supplier. They've got a debit balance. Generally, um, the balances would be credit balances. Okay. Now, the interesting thing with this question is we haven't got any balances brought down. In this case, NH Limited have commenced trading. So that means there is no balance brought down. We just need to work out the balance carried down, which will be the balancing figure. So let's start with the sales ledger control account then. So the BAL BD would be, and I'll put this in just for completeness, just to remind you, would be on the debit side. <clears throat> These are trade receivables. So they're current assets. They owe us money. So any BAL BD, if we did have one up there, would be on the debit side. Now, anything that makes that balance brought down bigger, so for instance, selling stuff to people, so sales, credit sales, needs to go in there on the debit side. Anything that reduces the amount these customers owe us is going to go in on the credit side. So that will include discount allowed. That's going to go in on the credit side, 425. I'm going to suggest we just tick these off as we do them. Um, discount received is purchase ledger. Receipts from credit customers. So the double entry, we're debiting the bank. We're going to credit um, the sales ledger control account. So bank, I'll put their receipts from customers. So this is credit customers, not cash customers. Um, and then we've got a returned check from a credit customer. Well, the double entry for that is going to be to credit the bank because it will be on the payment side of the bank and to debit the sales ledger control account and obviously the individual customer's account. So bank, in this case, a returned check, £200 in there on the debit side to reinstate the debt. OK, now there are no contra entries, I don't think, are there? No contra entries. But there is some information here about a provision for doubtful debts. Now, this is what we call a red herring. So a red herring is something that's put in there to try and trip you up or fool you. Don't be fooled. Don't be tripped up. Red herrings, we don't want it to include anything to do with the provision for doubtful debts. So if you remember, the provision for doubtful debts is just deducted from trade receivables on the statement of financial position. It doesn't actually reduce the trade receivables per se. So it's just an allowance for the fact that some of them might go bad. So we don't want to be doing anything with that one. And then this one to do with the supplier is going to be on the purchase ledger because it's to do with a credit supplier. So it's telling us that they've got a debit balance carried down of £180. So we'll need to deal with that in a minute. So as I said, there are no contra entries here. I can't see any, um, which is unusual for a, a control account question. But if there were contra entries, we'd be crediting the sales ledger control account and debiting the purchase ledger control account. But all we need to do here is work out the balance carried down. So let's just do some totals here. We've got 45,200 on the debit side. We want to make both sides the same. So if we start with our 45,200 
and we take away the 425 and the 10,200, we've got a balance of 34,575. And remember, that it's always going to tell us to bring down any balance on the 1st of May. So let's make sure we do that, claim maximum marks. Apologies for the shadowiness as some of the light's not very good today. It's a very dark and dismal afternoon. The Easter sunshine has all but vanished. Okay, so that's the um, sales ledger control account done. So five points in the bag for that one. Now what we can do is just grab the purchase ledger one, pop that in under there. So remember that with this one again, there is no Val BD. <clears throat> if there was one though, it would be on the credit side. So trade payables are a current liability. So there'd be a credit balance. Okay, so all we've got to do is exactly the same. Pop the purchases in on the credit side. So credit purchases from the purchases journal, £25,000. So anything that makes the, um, the balance brought down bigger, in this case, obviously, the balance brought down is zero. Purchases are going to increase that. Purchase returns obviously would um, reduce that. We've got discount received. That's obviously going to make the amount we owe the suppliers lower. So the double entry for that is received. So it's other income. So we credit the discount received account and debit the purchase ledger control account. We've got bank, we've got paid to suppliers. Just let's squash that in there. 5,800. And that's all of those figures used up. Just remember again that if there was a contra entry, we'd have two ticks by that because it needs to go in the sales ledger and in the purchase ledger. Okay, now the proper balance, oh, I say proper balance carry down. The BAL CD for the credit balances is actually going to be on the debit side. So remember, um, it's whatever we need to fill the gap. But before we can do that, we need a balance carried down. We need that debit balance. So if you remember that the um, supply has been overpaid, so we would probably need to show that to get maximum marks, we need to show that separately as a BAL CD. It's going to come down so debit balance is going to come down on the debit side here so when it says it's a debit balance it's which side it comes down at the start of the next month on not which one you're carrying it down on so we're going to use that to balance off so we've got 25,180 on that side and then if we take away 125 and 5800 on there we've got 19,255 as our credit balance is carried down 25,180 and let's make sure we bring those down, Val BD, credit bells, for the start of the next month. So that's all there is to it. Ten marks, hopefully, in the bag there without too much difficulty. Thanks very much for watching.